views expressed come from men who've spent half their lives in grease-stained overalls, inhaling hazardous fluids. Before taking any advice, consider the source. This program will contain humor of a questionable nature. Welcome to Dave's Corner Garage. The boys have their tools and are ready to answer your questions. To reach Dave and Alan, text us at 905-567-5500 or visit our website at davescornergarage.com. Dave's Corner Garage is brought to you by Crown Rust Proofing. Crown, protect, maintain, save. And by Salem Tires. Salem, with you through every turn. Now, here's Dave and Alan. Okay, Al, hit it! Yee-haw! Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Dave's Corner Garage. Today we've got some exciting news. Uh, you know, we have a trip to Mexico. I should remind you of that. The Mayan Riviera is waiting for you. All you got to do is go to davescornergarage.com and enter. Nothing to buy, nothing to fill out. Just name, address, and postal code. And today we got into the studio uh, Jonathan Schlow. Jonathan's the inventor of a fantastic device that if you run out of power, like at our house, if a dog walks by the house and urinates on the hydrant, we got no power. Really? Well, how come? <laughs> I don't know. Somehow it's connected. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome back. Dave's Corner Garage. We have uh, the lines wide open for you. And today's special guest in our studio is Jonathan Schlow, who is the inventor of Car Generator. And we want to take your questions throughout the hour. Dave, back yep. to you. You know, it's very interesting when we meet people that actually do. I always had a thing was that those that do to do, those that don't teach. Well, uh, here we go with the guy that does to do. Jonathan Schlue's with us. Jonathan, how'd you get this idea that uh, car generators uh, should be manufactured? Well, thank you. Um, so it all started really about this time of year, in fact. Um, mm-hmm. Started with me feeling the cold weather, just like last night. I think we've had like seven degrees in Bancroft, and it's getting chilly and cottage country and in Toronto. So it started about this time of year. And I thought with the storms coming in, people have power outages. And I thought on my front porch, I thought, how, if the power goes out, will I keep the house warm? Because it's really great when the power goes out, the kids shout hooray, they get candles, they get flashlights, they make a tent, a fort, yay. But then about three or four hours later, the power stays off and the house starts getting cold. Mm -hmm. And that is no fun because when the house starts getting cold, you have to move out into a shelter. You got to fi- find a hotel, fight with people for food, figure out where you can take your pets, people on oxygen machines, anything else. It's just a ruckus. That's just no fun. And the best candle you have is right? in the driveway, your car. Exactly. So, and in fact, people, some people think, oh, I've just got a big fireplace. I got a big stack of wood. But you know, that only heats one room in the house, and the rest of the house freezes, and that's no fun. So. I first started by buying a big kerosene heater from King and Tire and a bunch of kerosene cans, and I thought, this is great. I can keep it going. But then... Mix your eyes water. <laughs> <laughs> well, those... Yeah, and those guys... Somebody died a couple of years ago because... Exactly. They ran their propane... Oh, it's clean out of monoxide, yeah. ...in the house, and yeah. they died of carbon monoxide. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, instead of that, I'll get a bunch of... A simple generator and a bunch of gas cans. But then I realized... So I had a, com- a couple of these gas cans stored in the garage you got to keep them fresh every six months or every year. It's like a fire hazard to keep a bunch of gas cans. And I don't know if you've ever seen when the storms happen, um, there's lineups for people trying to fill up those silly gas cans to get generator gas just to keep their house warm. And so this started between the country. E- exactly. Yeah. So, so I basically thought, and then I sat and I looked at my car and I thought, I've got a, an engine, or really I've got a great gas tank with like easily 100 liters or 20 to 30 gallons. I've got a great engine that is actually better than a regular generator because it's got all the filtration, oxygen sensors, everything to manage that. It's cleaner to run your car than it is to run a generator, hands down, easily. And I thought, you know what? Why do I want to have something else to sit in my garage? Why do I want this, you know, 300-pound thing sitting in my garage or another ugly thing on my front lawn? All I need to do is run my furnace. I want to keep my house warm so that everyone can stay in there and we don't have to go out. So I put all that together and realized that my car is actually three out of four parts of a generator. It's got the gas tank, the engine, a great alternator. It just needs the last piece, and that's how I invented Car Generator. So this is a, actually an, just an emergency device. You actually can carry it in the back of your car, so no matter where you are, you got power. It's enough to run. I'm just going through your list. You can run a sump pump. You can run your furnace. You can, you can run a few lights. You can run some TV. Those are really items that don't use a lot of amperage. 
And then the way to think about it is kind of like a two-seater sports car or a Mercedes smart car is an example. Like, you're not going to pick up, the, you know, the family from the airport. You're not going to drive the soccer kids around for soccer. But you're yeah. going to do the one thing that really matters, which is you make sure that you have power to run your furnace. And you can run it for 50 to 70 hours. So if your power outage extends and it drags on, you can keep going. And that's really why I invented it, because if it drags on... And the other great important thing is that there's no maintenance. Different than a regular generator, you buy it. The worst thing people did is a couple of years ago, they went out and they bought generators. They used them for a day, uh, put it back in the shed, forgot about it. And three years later, they tried to start it. Nothing. And it won't start. People won't don't start. realize that uh, nope. there's a whole lot of work to to operating and maintaining a generator. That's the dirty uh, secret. As you mentioned, you know, the fuel goes skunky. Um, anybody who has a cottage and keeps it, you know, has their lawnmower and whatnot from season to next knows they have to put in some type of uh, stabilizer. A stabilizer. But other people don't. Like you say, they just say, well, I, I don't need it, so I'll just park it. But then when you go to use it next time, it doesn't work. Exactly. So, Alan, so this it, is like the most simple device. It's you know, very, it's very it's a, simple. There's no maintenance to do on it. None. All you do is hook up two cables onto your battery yep. and plug in the extension cord to the furnace. Exactly. And, and start your it. car and you're good to go. That's so it. there's a question I would have is running your car on idle, is that going to hurt it? No. It doesn't. It's designed for that. No, your car can idle all days. You know, and, and how many times, because we're still in summer, but you come back and it's a storm and you're up in Halliburton and you're driving back and you're going, wait, our town has a, there's no lights on. And you know that sump pump keeps your basement from going, oh, but it's water everywhere, and you're you're done. But this thing, you get home, right, and you just get your car going, plug it in, and your sump pump's working. And that's a, really, that's a really good example. We had a, in this ice storm that we had in April, our neighborhood uh, street beside us was knocked out of power, and there was a lovely young family in there. Um, he actually found out about it, ordered on Amazon at 11 o'clock at night. The next morning, 9 o'clock, actually, he was a street away from me. I went and arrived with the generator that I had with me, and uh, we hooked it up to his Subaru Outback, and within five minutes, just ran an extension cord in. His house was down to 13 degrees. Wow. Um, so within a, a couple of minutes, he had his sump pump working, his radiant floor heating, and he's got hot water rads. So all of that was running again, and he was a ha- very, very happy camper. So the next question is, what's the price point of this of this product? Uh, it's $695. Right. That's pretty, for the, pretty modest, yeah. For the one that's uh, waterproof. Yeah, that's the waterproof one. There's a dry version that we've made for a little bit less, which you can't use. It's just for people occasionally using camping. Okay. Um, there's a dry version, um, but it doesn't really doesn't so, solve the need when you need it, which so is usually bad weather. for 700 bucks, you keep it in the back of your car. Yep. It's, it's a cool thing. Is this, it's the size of it. It's so convenient. It's the size of a backpack, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking, like, we live in, a, in, a, in an electronic world. We've got iPads to charge up, iPhones and all that electronic stuff. I mean, the kids, they don't even look out the windows. They just play <laughs> with their iPads. You know, well, like, you can power your router with it. You, I got an email a couple of days ago saying they were camping, right, with the kids, and they had a, a, a bedroom sheet up, a ba- you know, basically up on the, on this, on the uh, branch, and they were showing a movie, yeah. right? So you could do that with the kids. I mean, there's endless applications to this. That's a real big thing when you're camping, for sure. We have an Airstream RV and when we go camping, sometimes you get those days and we got a half a kilowatt of solar on the roof and we've got lots of batteries inside and everything, but sometimes you run into those days where it's shady and you got rain and you need something for the kids to do or you just want power and you don't want to drag a generator around, so that's a real big part of our market is just that. And you know, the other thing is we haven't even touched on is medical devices. Yeah. Yeah. You need that pump going, you need that all other stuff. All righty. John and Shlou, 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 we'll be back. We're uh, going to take a quick break. We got the You're phone getting better. Up. You're getting better, Dave. I like okay, this. Go ahead, Steve. We'll do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Schlow is in with us from cargenerator.com. There are applications that you probably have thought of that maybe we haven't talked about yet. So please give us a call. Go on his website and check it out as far as you want it. Uh, cargenerator.com and davescornergarage.com. 